today and she was very patient with me because I wanted to make a video. That's what we're going to do today is we're going to make, we're going to try out a video of a behind the scenes of water drops. I mean, what a great subject for macro photography. So thank you so much for, at least for sending that image and being patient for me to put it on the show because you know macro is fun with nature and bugs and all that kind of stuff but there's also a whole other area that macro photography can get into and this is kind of really a great show for me because we I mean I love nature I'm a worldwide federation and support that our business supports that when I'll talk about our business in a second but today's show really is about fine art macro photography. I want to start this and really focus with you guys because you know if you notice you can go around and search for things and there's tons of uh, you know Photoshop live shows and nature live shows and portrait tons of portrait live shows but us macro people just don't get enough credit I mean we work hard to get these images up close nice and sharp and to share it with others that you don't see with the naked eye. You just walk right past a flower and you don't realize how beautiful the pollen is or the bee that's sitting there. Or you don't realize how beautiful a water drop can be. Or you don't realize how gorgeous a fine art piece can be manipulated just by starting off shooting a macro photograph. So super happy that I'm doing this. It's number six. Six? Yay! So the sixth of my show, you know, I'll tell you, uh, technically there probably will be some boo-boos because I'm still learning the process, but I am, I feel like I am getting better. At least Ashley now can chat with you guys and give links to you all where before I didn't realize I had to put her as an admin. So that's really cool. I'm going to say hello. Ashley is on Facebook and I'm just going to let everybody know that we are live and I'm really happy that Elise is here because her image is so much fun to talk about and she's great she loves water drops so this is perfect let me just say hi to her and again I see there's others watching so definitely say hello and, or where are you from you don't have to say your name or where are you located because Elise is from, again, like I told you before, from Ireland, and then Jamona is from Panama. So we have two people that are out of the country, so welcome, welcome. Hello, let me just type and talk at the same time and give her a smiley face. And we'll go ahead and, oh, did any of you guys notice how YouTube has totally changed? Yesterday I was playing with getting things organized uh, just in case my video didn't show I put it on YouTube if you guys have problems so I went over there and a whole interface I was like well things have changed it actually looks good and I like change so I'm one of the few that would totally love to change and if you notice my I've, you know the background here there's a lot of stuff going on it's because I have and you'll see when I change to a, my other camera that I have, oh, Catherine's, she's from Atlanta. Welcome, welcome. Yay. Thanks for being here. And so the background is a setup for my macro water drop video that I did. Now, I did two videos. Uh, she really got me going on the, the water drops because it's a perfect sub subject for macro photography. But um, Ashley's right. She's a very good business person. She's like, Mom, that's really long. So I'm only going to show you one video because it's true. We need to get things rolling. And the second video is going to be on our uh, private Facebook group. So let me do a couple little beginnings, get my glasses on so I could see. So just to give you a little bit, if you've never been here before, this show is every other Thursday at the same time at 1 p.m. Pacific. I'm from California. So we do this every other Thursday, The, but I do put content out every Thursday. What happens is when I get questions, most of the time they've been through YouTube, 
but let me see if I can see what's going on. Oh, hi, Kim. Kim's over in uh, Facebook. Welcome, Kim. See, I'm just starting to get the hang of Facebook. Kim is another amazing photographer. I work with her, and she is getting into, um, I'm pushing her with lighting. So, Kim, guess what? This is a great subject for you to see with the water drops. Um, she wants to learn more about water drops. But anyways, this, this again is every other Thursday because the next Thursday I'll have a deep dive video that goes up on YouTube. So that's when YouTube, most of the people are YouTube that have asked me questions, but if you go to my um, page, my business page, which is the Facebook and Sullivan J Photography, which is sharing this uh, show live at the moment, and ask me questions, then I can uh, definitely answer the questions in a deep dive if I can't get it through this live show. So those are those are what ha that's what happens basically every Thursday. I have something coming out for you guys. Now, again, I talked about Facebook. This is a private group, and it's Facebook groups macro live chat, and that's where you can submit your images or ask questions and get to see a little extra. I've been busy. Kevin and I have been having some fun with summertime and family things. But as winter comes along, you'll see more stuff just for that group. So again, this video, the second video that I did, I will share that in this group. So if you're not part of that group, definitely join. It would be nice to see you there. It's a small group, which is good because then I can really connect to you guys. The next thing, if you don't like Facebook, some people aren't into the Facebook thing, then you can go to SullivanJPhotography.com slash macro live is here. And that is a place that actually tells you all about the show. It has the show, the various shows that we've done. It has uh, where you can ask questions, which somebody has went to my site and asked me a question and we get to the his name and I could be butchering his name Kleist Fenton or Cl I think it's Kleist Fenton so he went to my website to ask a question about a macro lens so when we get to the equipment se equipment sec uh, section <laughs> I try to say that three times equipment section I'm going to go ahead and talk to him and you guys about macro lenses for sure. I think that is it because I really want to dive, I, I just want to dive in and start talking about Elisa's image because I do have that video also. So this show is always, I try to make sure that it's always within an hour. I don't like it to go past. So I'm kind of watching the clock and I want to make sure we get everything on the show. It's a, this to me is an exciting show. So let's go ahead and get into her image and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and read her information. That's one of the things I do ask for a little bit more detailed information. So let's get into the critique. Let me make sure I got my Lightroom up for you guys to see her beautiful image. Okay, you should be seeing her image, and it's a, uh, let me read her stuff, because I mean, she hand holds everything. It's amazing to me, because I could never get this water drop over here to be as sharp as what she gets. I, I give her so much credit for, <laughs> for doing that. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna read. I really adore these drop shots, but they are so difficult. I have no fancy equipment or motion triggers. I sit at my kitchen sink with the faucet dripping. That's pretty cool. <laughs> shots are handheld and I'm trying to judge the timing. That's why I trash so many. I hear you, I hear you on that one for sure. I try to light the area as much as possible and generally use a swivel cosmetic mirror to drop the drops onto. So her, she was, for this image, she used a Canon PowerShot SX2 
240 HS. She used her 50 millimeter lens and she shot this manual mode at f4 with her ISO at 400. EV is negative one third at 1 60th of a second. So she also says her flash was, flash was enabled, which you definitely, you have to have something to stop the motion, so that's good, and constant on. Diffuse flash level, but most of the time set about negative one, one-third of these, um, oh, negative one, one-third for these. Digital, her digital zoom was enabled with telephoto at 2.0. I'm not looking to buy expensive timing equipment as I know these can achieve, be achieved by hand. I just want some advice on the best way to achieve the results I'm after. I think my main problem is that I'm not lighting the area enough. Okay, so let me put on the different camera that I have so at least that you guys can see me so you're not just blank. Let's go to the old camera. Let's see. Okay, there I am. Hi guys. Let me look and see if there's any other questions. Oh, look at Kim. Woohoo! Yeah, I am so happy to see you, Kim. She does great horse shots. Oh my God, beautiful stuff. Okay, so let's get into her image. Well, I think, I mean, I love the purple. I don't know where that's coming from, but that's gorgeous. And I love that you got the water drop nice and, it, you know, it's, it's sharp. There's two things that I think that might be giving you issues here. One is that, to tell you the truth, digital zoom does not work that well, even though you're an amazing photographer and can hand hold. But most people can't do what you do, at least there's no way. Um, but the real thing, that the main thing that I wanted to share with you on this particular image is that you have the, I use mirrors all the time, but what I think might be happening, and I'm almost positive it is, that this down here at the bottom, you can see there's a lot of reflection, and mirrors just bounce. I mean, mirrors are amazing to use when you want to bounce in light to your subject, but when you have water on it, on top of it, I mean, it's just the, the light's hitting the mirror and it's just reflecting all over the place. So I feel that maybe, I, I would like you to try this again and don't use a mirror. Use maybe a white, some white piece of paper or something that you won't be able to see the bottom so much because you're gonna see my little video on what I've done. And it, it just smooths things out a little bit better. So then what happens is our eyes will go to the brightest areas of your image, the sharpest and the brightest and the colors. And of course, this drop is perfect. I just think that the mirror is bouncing too much. And the reason why I wanted to specifically talk to you about that is I know that you got a DSLR and I know, I don't know if your macro lens came in, but I know that you definitely uh, said you were ordering a macro lens. So with that, you're gonna be so excited to be able to really get up close with the macro lens. I mean, that's why I love these water drips. You gotta use a macro lens to really get and see the beauty of water. So I think those are the two main things to tell you the truth. I mean, hand holding, kudos, but I'm gonna show my video right now. And the way she's letting it drip, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, see, you can kind of see. This is a bag that I, this is a bag of red water. So. If you put a pin in here and you just let it, so you can see, put a pin, and she's letting the faucet do it. So you can actually do something like this and put a pin and just let it drip. So that's another way. Now she's talking about a rig that makes amazing photographs. And in the equipment section, I am gonna share with you guys uh, that rig, because I want you to see, for those of you that really wanna get into this style of macro photography, you really should think about buying the rig that she's talking about. And we'll talk about that in the equipment section. So let me go ahead and share my video real quick. And then we'll come back and I'll see if any of you guys have questions. So let me go over here and we'll go to the video. 
And if it's not working for some reason, please let me know. Oh wait, she has a, oh, you know what? I'll go to the, the video at least and then if you have questions. Oh, you said not yet. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> let me go to the video. So here's my setup. I have a flash here and I don't have the bottom part of it that can just sit. It's, it's such an old flash that I just made my own little rig, put it in a box and some um, rice to hold it. And because I'm a cannon to fire this off the camera, I have this mechanism here and it will pop. I'll just share with you real quick. I won't do a water drop, but I'll just share with you how it pops. Now I'm just using water at the moment. I have this backdrop and it's just a three ring binder. One thing I do want you to know is that when you're using flash, the light will bounce off very quickly. So this backdrop is right, as you can tell, next to the water drops. If you were to have it that far, then it would just be totally dark. You really do need to get the water as if it was one of those infinity pools that you level the water all the way to the top and then have your camera shooting straight into it. Now Elise had shot it up here and was hand holding and that's really difficult to do. To tell you the truth is just to get it hand hold on top of a macro which is really close. Now she's very good at that but it's just so much easier to set your camera say on a tripod or some boxes to level it up or like I have here say uh, a rice bag or some something that can stabilize your camera because I'm hand holding this uh, the other shot that you'll see I actually had it on this bar right here but I just think for me it's easier to just hand hold and let it drip in the middle of the water and take my shots with that the most important thing for you to do though is to make sure that you're in focus and some people use pencils and pens and all that kind of stuff and I just take things around the house and use whatever I can so I had these radishes cut up they float but what happens is if I can put it in the middle of the water you can see here and it kind of stabilizes me just to be straight and then I go to the camera and focus to make sure that it's in the middle. So when I'm dropping the water drops, I make sure that the water drops are in the middle and everything is focused. So it's just an easy way for me to focus. And I'm just using one flash right now because my light is, the light source here is the window. I do have this just in case uh, my light is really low because you need good light and you need a flash to stop the motion. So you can see down here, it's gonna aim in the middle and I'm gonna go up as high as I want. I'm gonna let a couple drops go just to make sure I'm in the middle and after a while, you'll just get it. Those water drops that you see that look like a mushroom that are really pretty, those are the ones that have a water drop and then a quick water drop that will hit the first one. And you have to be really good at hand holding or get this mechanism to get that really cool look from those water drops. But this is a great way to start off your basic setup. If you don't have enough light, then again, you're gonna to have to add more light for your exposure, but you do need some type of flash, something to stop the motion of the water drop. Otherwise, it just looks like a mush, okay? Hope you have some fun with the water drops. Okay, I hope you guys heard it okay <laughs> because that was my test to share video with you guys. So with that setup, I did this image. And because we get up so close to the water drop, the background will blur out. So this right here is the setup that you just saw. This is the image that I got. Now I did another one again, and I'm gonna share that with the private Facebook group, and that's with the two lights on this side, and that's this one just playing with uh, color and having the tip a different color. So 
that's basically that setup. But let me go ahead and I'm going to share with you at least this. Um, let me get my glasses. I always take them off because I know I have a bad glare. So let me get to this camera. And I wanted to share this really quick. Whoops. So, I mean, if you were saying that you needed, you know, you were thinking that you needed more light. I don't know so much. I think it's really the mirror. But if you do something different in the mirror, you know, you might want more light. And this is really cheap. I mean, this I got at just a, or my husband did, a Home Depot. It's like just a regular place. I don't even know if you guys have Home Depots up there. But, you know, it's just really easy. You can clamp it, buy one of these, and, you know, put it in and play with it. Now, if it's too harsh, then you saw in the video that I put just a, you, just a soft cloth or just anything that, you know, so it diffuses the, the light and then move up and down. So that should help you, give you a little extra light to get those water drops the way you want. This one right here, I had enough light because I know you can see back here, um, this right here is the, at a certain time of the day, boy, it just blows in some light. So I didn't need it. I took out my other light just in case, but really um, the flash did really good. Now the other shot that I have that I shared, and I'm going to share in the Facebook, I used my macro ring light to stop the motion. And I, when you use a macro ring light, you have to get rid of those reflector, the reflective um, pieces that are going to show up in that water because it will look ugly. It definitely doesn't uh, do justice to the water drop. So if you're going to use a macro ring light, you can, but in post-production, you're going to have to get rid of those highlights. Okay, so now we're going to go to the second. And, and do, you have, do you have any questions, Elise? Because I'm going to go dive into the second one. Um, I know we're 30 seconds, it's about 30 seconds to a minute sometimes delayed. So that could, uh, you know, I'll wait for a little bit. I'm, you know, you could jump in and then, or Ashley can let me know if she asks questions and I miss it, okay? So we'll go ahead and check out the next beautiful piece before I move things over. Let's go back over to the right area. Let me get off of me for one sec so you guys can enjoy this beautiful piece from Jamona. So what she says is, she says, I'm never quite sure about composition in, she just, based, let me start this all over again. I always butcher this stuff. It says, I'm, I am never quite sure about composition. In this image, I'm unsure about how the image is cropped. Should I have placed the center of the orchid in the center of the frame? The other question I have is about the flood fill, which is this portion down in here. This is, a, I'll get up close so you guys can see it in a second. Um, she has a question about, about flood fill and the place it begins on the image. Finally, with regards to the flood fill, I would like to achieve a more natural water look. I'm using flaming pears. The flaming pair software to do the fill yeah and I actually have done uh, I love this and I think Jamona you got this from my video because I did a whole calendar using this software I just love it so much it's it's amazing let me put my camera back on so you guys can see me at least when I'm talking um, so yeah it's a really it's a really great I'm going to give that to you in the equipment section also because you can use this for free, do a free trial. But it is a Photoshop plugin. So if you're not using Photoshop, then it, I don't know if it's a standalone, tell you the truth, because I've just purely used it for Photoshop. So let's go into your critique and then we'll talk about the, um, the actual flood. So you're curious about how it, I, I don't think it needs to be in the center. I love that it is off-center, to tell you the truth. It, I think it gives it a little bit more character. Let me um, see. Let me see if we go in here. Okay, so we're going to get up really close so people can see. Oops, sorry. So we can see. So here is the water. It's called Flood 2. 
and it adds water to your images or a water feel to it. Now the one that she was talking about, um, she says that she wants more wrist realistic. Uh, Jamona, this, that is, you probably use realistic slider and if you want more of a real water feel to it, then use the complex. So I just did that really quick and just to share with you, see this gives it a little bit more of a water. Let's go into fill instead of one-to-one. -one. We don't need to see all that. Okay. So see how this now, <laughs> it looks like water. That's more of a complex. Oops, hold on one second. Okay, so that's, that actually is, it's a great tool to play with if you really wanna make sure that it looks like water. Let's go back to fit and we'll go into your image. Now, I understand what you're saying. Let's move this out. I understand what you're saying about where you put the water. And the reason why I think that you're having doubts about it is because there's two places in this image that my eyes go to that distract me with your water. And it is here in the middle and this little guy over here to the left. I think that if you were to just clone that out in Photoshop and get rid of those two little pieces, this might over here to the left might be a little bit of, of a pain, but she's really good with working her. She does a lot of composites. I feel that you'll be able to, you know, add a new layer and go ahead and just clean that up. And what will happen is that we will see here that the water is flowing and it won't stop. Like it breaks right here and then it breaks again right over here. I don't think this one over here to the side really breaks it up as much. Also, I mean, I totally love your macro flower. Did you see that it looks, to me, I'm always looking into detail. And actually, uh, Cam, who was here before, um, was it you, Cam? I don't know, yeah, I think it was you, Cam, that gave me those, the other orchids, and it looked like little people. <laughs> well, this one does too, look. Doesn't that look like a, a alien? I, I just thought it was so cool. I probably personally would like, mess with these eyes a little bit and bring them out because I just think it looks like an alien. It's fun to see the little hidden secrets in some of these macro pieces, but I don't know what your artist statement is, Jamona, but I just thought it was really fun. Um, I wanted to share with you, see all of this up here is gorgeous. I wouldn't change anything. Another thing that to me is breaking up, the reason why you're asking about the different, you want more realistic water because this is water, but it's like kind of like the glass water feel to it. And I think the reason why it's, there's something that you're saying to your mind, I, I think I want it more realistic, is because see at the bottom down here, it's another piece that's breaking it up. Let's just go, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go to develop model, share with, oh yeah, maybe I will. Hold on one second. We'll go to develop module. Let's just do that for you, right? And hopefully it won't crack it up. So let's just do a real fast crop and just see how it feels. To me, I like, let me just see how, if that feels good. I might even crop it a little more. Let me just, but look at the difference of just maybe right there. Let's try that. So now it's flowing and it's not breaking the foreground. So it's one big piece. I think this is more successful by just taking that little part off of the bottom. Now it has a really nice flow to this gorgeous image. So don't change the composition. Don't change. everything else you've done is beautiful. It's just the water effect that you know practice with. Um, I think cropping the bottom and just um, getting rid of some of this for sure, and this will stop the break of our eyes going right there. We want to flow with your beautiful image. So she said that she was, um, oh, let me see. Elise says, no, Jess, I think that will really help. I will try again with your advice and let you see the results. Yes, and I, oh, that's great. Whenever you guys, whenever I do these things, you could take it or leave it, but if you do, do what I ask you guys to do, I would love to see how it turns out. And then if you still have questions, especially in the Facebook group, if you have questions, you know, ask me because it might be a good question too to bring on the show. So yes, please share with that and share everything that you guys do. I love it, it's so much fun. 
So with Jamana, she said, Jamana said that she wasn't going to be here today. She was going to try to come, but she's going to watch this later. Um, so I think that's it. Is there any, no, I don't, I, oh, I think we should just dive in to the equipment sub segment so you can see some fun stuff. So let me click off of this and get things ready for the equipment. I have to remember where, here we go, the equipment. Let's go to that. Oh, it's not going, it went right to me. Oh! <laughs> oh my God. Too funny, I told you guys I would mess up. So I messed up once. Oh, hey, that's what happens when you're on six, show six but you know what it's a lot of fun right guys i mean we're talking about macro who cares if jenna screws up <laughs> all right i want to share equipment stuff so the first thing because i know that elise is in ireland i really want to talk about her you know she was so sweet again for waiting so let me get things organized with her what she was talking about. I thought it was good to see. Some of you may not know what the piece of equipment that she was talking about. So we'll go to this Photoshop kit and let's go here. You can take me off. How's that? We don't really need, um, yeah, we'll just, I don't know what's on the right side. It's, let me take myself off. How's that? Because who wants to see me? You want to see this? Yay! So this is a um, water drop photography kit. And it is amazing. Why is it doing that? Hold on. It's, okay, it's $399. That's what she said. It's expensive. So if you're going to get into this, now this is one of tons that are out there. I'm just showing, I just want to share with you that what you do is you hook this up to your camera right in here. Uh, the other one, I actually saw another one which was really cool. You push the button and the button takes the picture of the, makes the camera take the picture. So what happens is the water drops really fast and I'm going to share an image with you. So the water drops really fast and at least two drops, like I said in the video, and all you do is make sure that you have it in focus, your lighting and everything's perfect, but you push a button, it triggers your camera and triggers the water and you can make so much cool, you know, different things when it comes to water drops. So this isn't my image because I don't have this mechanism. I'm not fast enough to do the double or triple water drops, but see how it has that little bell on the outside? So I just did a Pinterest thing. If you go and look at water drops and just do a search that's how these people get these things they have a mechanism that can add the water fast so it's hitting each other and it, i mean it's gorgeous if i was into water drops i would totally pay for this because you can have so much fun making crown i actually have a crown that i'm going to process and put in the facebook but it's the ones where it pops up and then it hits it again and it makes a crown like on top of the water drop so this is a great tool if you really get into it and you want to do this more i mean i wouldn't spend any money i wonder if you could rent these i've never thought about that that might be something that um, yeah, it is totally fun, huh, Lisa? I would have such a blast playing with this mechanism. I'm going to see if I could rent something like this, and if I can and it's reasonable, I'll share it in the Facebook group because I think this would be fun just to play and rent. I rent everything before I buy anything, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about, um, let me get to... I'm going to put me on camera now. Let's go put me on camera because I want to read my question. This is my first question. So let me get over to this camera. Okay, hold on. It didn't click for some reason. There I am. Yay! Okay, so I want to, I want to read. This is my first question. I have on my site where you can 
rent, I mean, <laughs> rent, I have on my site where you can ask questions and because some people just don't want to get into Photoshop um, to the Facebook and it was so cool to see that somebody actually went to my site and asked a question. So I'm going to read his question, but before I say, oh, I see Elise says, I adore water drops, but the equipment is really pricey. It is, isn't it? That's why I want to see if we can rent that because if we can rent it, how fun would that be, be able to make a whole bunch of photographs for like a week of just all these amazing water drops. Oh, Randy Dagendorf, hey! Hi, <laughs> Randy. Okay, check this out. I've got my best friend Pam's on, and she says, and then Randy is her brother. <laughs> They're chatting in my Hi, you guys. Too funny. They're coming over to Pam's house on the 15th, Pam. Your brother's coming over. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We just got back. Randy, we just got back from Pam and Mike's and had a blast. So, <laughs> all right. So let me go to this question because I was, like I said, I was so excited that somebody actually went to my website and asked me a question that, of course, I got to answer this question. So I think, again, that his name is, and I'm so sorry. I don't, a pers I wish I could just hear all of your names and make sure that I get it right. But it's Kleist Fenton. I have a Nikon D70. I want to do macro photography and I have been trying to figure out a beginner adorable affordable lens and I it's mind boggling. I want to take close up nature photographs. She he is a macro nature uh, photographer. And so he says, which is something huge. I did a segment on my lens that I use, but I really feel this is a great question because there's so many of you that I'm sure feel just like he does. He writes, I'm overwhelmed trying to figure out how to buy lenses for my camera and how to set it up. I have an excellent eye to do great with a point and shoot, but I want to delve deeper. Kudos to you because you will have a lot of fun and be able to play more with a DSLR digital lens reflex. I have, did I say that right? Anyways, let me, hold on. I have a Nikon D7, like you said, currently, and I'm not using it because I can't figure out an afford, affordable macro lens. So I feel your pain. I know. I mean, when I was first getting into this, it was so hard to figure out what I want. So when I first started buying lenses, I bought them I didn't, I didn't buy the greatest and the most expensive lenses because I was just trying to learn. And matter of fact, when I first did macro, um, hold on, here's, here's my macro lens. And what I would do is I would, there's, I don't have them anymore because I don't suggest, I'd rather do what he's doing before you do what I'm going to say. They have these little things that you can screw onto your lens and you can get up closer. It's a teaser <laughs> because, oh, hi, Jerry. No worry. She says, hi, sorry I'm late. Hey, I, thanks for coming, Jerry. Nice to see you. Um, Jerry, you should submit some of your images. She just finished some of her, uh, her level 20 with me. Uh, her and I have been working with each other, so that's a long story. But anyways, um, so some people, when they first start, they go ahead and they put these little things in screws. It's like a three adapter, two adapter. And it, it, to put anything in front of your lens, to me, is just making things more blurry. And as a macro photographer, when you're getting up close, it's already hard enough to have such a short depth of field, which means not as much in focus. So to really get that subject nice and sharp, it can be difficult. So to add more stuff is, to me, just, I mean, it's not for us macro photographers that are here watching this show. If you are starting now because you're just interested, kudos, the more the merrier, I say. And I really like what he's saying. So let's go over and I'm going to bring up, I, I want to talk about a couple lenses. And let me look at my time. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Ooh, 46. I'm doing good. Let me, <laughs> let me start talking fast. I only have this and one other thing I want to share with you guys, which is Jamona's thing. So let's go right over to his information so we can talk to you about lenses okay let me get that over and you can see here we go okay 
So let's talk about lenses. Now, you, I, I, I know that I'm pretty sure that your Nikon lens is not full frame, but that doesn't mean that you don't, I mean, you could still get a full frame lens. It can be, that's confusing. What I'd like you to do is, I'm gonna talk about these lenses, but before you buy it, if, if you have a place that you could rent, I rent from a place called Borrowed Lenses. And let me give you an example. This lens is almost $900, and I can rent it for $42 for seven days, and I've done this. Before I make that $900 purchase, I don't want to mess up. I, I mean, money is very important, and it's, I've wasted so much by not doing this, buying a lens and going, what the heck was I thinking? So if there's a place next to you that you could do something like this after we talk about your lenses, do it. Definitely try to rent. I suggest that to everybody because we think that we really want, I've saved, then I've lost money and I've saved money because I remember, I don't remember Kevin and I went and I got this really wide angle lens and it's supposed to be like thousands of dollars. I hated it. I'm like, this is useless for what I like. So I suggest that you definitely rent. I don't know if you have a place called Borrow Lenses. This company is amazing. That's why I mentioned them because they have great customer service. It's really good, very easy to use. I'll put those down in the show notes. Okay, so let's talk about your lenses. So when you're first starting out, I found this one. Now. Look at you're gonna get people here that's gonna be like, oh, this is not a crap. This is a horrible lens, and blah blah. Because the 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 reason why they're expensive is they're cut really well. But you're just starting off in macro, and I don't want you to be frustrated and not do macro photography. So this is on sale, twenty dollars. I'm in Adorama. Adorama is one of my favorite places to shop. They're a great company also, very fast and good customer service. At least I've had great customer service. So here's a, here's a macro lens at 50, 55 millimeter. I suggest, this is just my suggestion, is to start off with a 100 millimeter. It's kind of like the middle area. And just like our other lenses, when they're wide, you'll get more in focus and as they as the lenses get longer, you lose less depth of field, so the background is out of focus. When you're macro shooting, when you're getting up really close, all that matters is that the lens is one to one. So you have to see a one to one. That means that you can get up really close to your subject really close to the subject and in this sensor there's a little rectangle thing that means that when you get one-to-one -to, -one to your subject that is the same size as your subject that's in the frame of your photograph it's hard to explain unless you really see it but it it's amazing when you get up close but every lens whether it's a 50 millimeter 55 millimeter 100 millimeter or that's not a macro this is a macro or let's see hold on there's a 180 i know canon has a 180 which is a longer lens and i'm pretty sure i saw one in here i mean there's like six pages of this i could see why you get so frustrated here's a zeiss Woo! 1800 dollars <laughs> they're like one of the best lenses because they're cut so well but um, there is a longer lens. I could have sworn I seen it, but as you get longer, like say the 180, it does, that doesn't mean you're getting closer to the actual su subject. You're still one to one. If you want to get closer to life size of that subject that you're photographing, you have to add extension tubes. So it's really not about, oh, I got to get a 180 so I can get closer. No, it's about that you still have a one to one. It's just a different feel to your work. And I feel starting off a 100 or 90 millimeter is really the best way to start. So that one was a reasonable price. Here it is at 379. Now, I don't know what your, I don't know where, 
I didn't ask and I should have said where was your price range because I noticed that there is a sale hold on one second here's a Sigma this is $969 normal price and it's for $569 so I don't know if you can save a little bit more pennies um, because that that would be a great lens but again before you do any of this please see if you can rent from somewhere around your location and then compare I mean I did I did a comparison on my cam my actual cameras the 5d 5d2 5d3 you can't even tell the difference so it, but lenses are different lenses are really cut when they're cut sharp you get a really nice crisp like that Zeiss that I shared with you that I don't have that I would love to have that but when the lotto comes I'll, I'll buy one <laughs> so I don't know if he's here oh wait let's see uh, TA, oh, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, TA. Lens Rental rents the Cognizzi rail and computer system, but not the drop attachment. Oh, okay. Okay, that sounds good. You know, there the rail is, um, I didn't share that part of it. That would make things really nice. Oh, thank you for sharing that in the chat. I really appreciate that. Let me see if there's any other stuff in here. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing that with us about the water drop so he's saying that the so lens rental which we could do a search on that you guys from C O G N I S Y S rail because I butcher names so I figured I'd spell that out for you um, and the computer system but not the drop attachment so thank you Okay, the last thing that we're going to share with you guys is the flood. So this is what Jamona used. And if you guys just want to be creative and try new things, it's only like $33. It's a plug-in. So you, like I said before, you guys have to use Photoshop. I'm not sure if it's on its own or if it uses, because I use Photoshop, but you can contact them and support and... Um, definitely find out if you can use it in a different program hey you know what I want to say one more thing about I want to say one more thing about lenses when you guys go buy lenses and you're not sure if it's going to work on your camera Sometimes it's just, to me, it's like mumbo jumbo. All these mechanisms and, you know, all the, whatever. I just want to know, will it fit my Canon 5D? Will it fit my, my, D, my Nikon D70? Just write to the people that you're thinking about. Send a message to them and say, will it fit my, cam my camera or whatever? And make sure they have a good policy to return it. So if you buy these lenses and it's not fitting properly or something's funky with the lens make sure that the return policy is really good so you can return that ASAP get your money back um, and hopefully though I've had good rapport with companies that will tell me oh yes this will work for this camera no this one won't work for that camera so anyways I just wanted to I forgot I wanted to mention that to you so just in case um, you're wondering if a lens will fit or not so here it is this is the flood and you really can have a lot of fun playing with this program so here's the sliders that I was talking to her about see simple makes it kind of like a glass and complex gives it more of a watery feel to it so that's more realistic the simple is kind of like a glass effect so um, oh, I'm like in the frame of that oh well so I gave Oh, Ashley, she has, I've heard the kids in the background to tell you the truth. She hasn't given you guys the links to these things um, that she has twins. And so they, they, I heard them in the background. So she was going to give you guys links and I have a feeling she's having a tough time with that. So what we'll do is we'll put all the links that I've talked about in the show notes and in the Facebook group. So you guys can link up to all of these places, the all everything that I've shared um, I also in my YouTube 
account if you follow me I did a tutorial on details about this plugin because I loved it so much and as you can see it's about 20 minutes long it's about 19 minutes 32 seconds or whatever it is saying and I, I feel like if you're gonna play with this I I answer my own questions when I'm learning something so it this might be helpful for you guys if you're getting into some the program called flood you again you can try it for free and if you like it it's only like 32 bucks it's so cheap so that is done with the equipment let me get over here to me hello everyone yay so we're almost wrapping up the actual show and I just want to say thanks for those of you that have showed up and um, chatted with with the group and and if you guys could it's such a baby I've only had like I said six uh, shows so if you guys could share this with people that you know that would enjoy uh, macro photography that would be awesome uh, get this chat going I had someone say that she loved the show and that keeps me going I you know when you try these new things you wonder if it's gonna be a go or not go and with you guys showing up I feel like yes I will continue to do these shows for photographers that you know want or not even what if you just like macro photography and just want to look at macro photographers at least you can see behind the scenes of what we're up to and the, how hard it is to get these close up images so if you could share and thanks Pam I think I just saw that you shared love you she's my bestie and you can find me here on YouTube at Solomon J photo and again if you want to join the private group it's Facebook groups macro live macro live chat that is the private group that I'll be sharing more of those videos that I did for the water drop and I kept the setup over here because I wanted to uh, photograph milk that's another thing that is like something that would be really fun to to play with is is milk and and colored water and whatever so I'll share that when I get that rolling if you want your images critiqued you can go to the Facebook and add them there or you can go to Sullivan J photo dot com or sullivanjphotography.com macro live is here and that is where you can see the shows you can also ask questions that's what we got that's what I got here about the lenses so thank you and any other questions that you might have I'm sure it will be answered there again we are here every other Thursday and normally I check the calendar and I didn't I'm so bad let me see when is our next let's go into Google and let me go into my calendar because I don't remember let's go so oh my gosh it's like already gonna be oh I didn't tell you guys in the beginning I'm I'm starting a membership up in the fall it's coming up right now you can go to membership dot com and get free I did free textures free uh, Lightroom presets and then today I'm sending another pack of free goodies for people that are following the updates on on me making the site so today's the 31st Wow so it looks like the 14th will be the next macro chat live so my husband is having surgery on the 12th if he's not doing well I think I'm sure he will then I may have to cancel but if he's doing well and everything's okay I'll be here for sure um, I think that's it I hope you guys had a great time and I know I did I really appreciate you guys all being here and follow me uh, on Facebook and YouTube and check out my website and if you have questions ask them that's what I'm here for and share so we can chat I love looking at the chat I like to see movement <laughs> all right you guys have a great day cheers